babes. Happy Christmas Eve to you. I was supposed to come on tonight, but I'm not going to make it. I just got home and I have to see about my babies. So I said, let me just come on, read a few stories from my book real quick and tell you that I am doing that one day sale. So uh, if you want to get the book, The Naked Wife or 23 Tasks of Guys, you might meet. I'm going to put them on sale. I think I can do 15. Because, you know, Amazon playing with us all the time. He changed it. By the way, I got, when I got my nails done, girl. Oh. You know, they play with the numbers, okay? They be changing stuff and not email us. And then you go in there in the back room and then you find out, oh, you can't change it, okay? So, my book, The Naked Wife, and um, page 208. This is actually 206, I think. One of my favorite stories, though very sad, it's, it's, it's one of those learning stories for me where uh 187 okay frosty frosty the snowman has frostbites i should read that one that's one of my good ones so it's really funny okay and um blinds and training bra let me read frosty first okay frosty the snowman has frostbite hilarious i love this i got caught her and see how she's doing from the naked wife page uh 206 frosty the snowman has frostbites can you imagine frosty the snowman has frostbites girl my bedroom is cold that if frosty let me start over my bedroom is so cold that if frosty the snowman were in there he will get frostbites. We have always had issues in the bedroom. Yes, even when we were dating and engaged, there were issues. My husband promised that he would work on it. But instead of it getting better, it got worse. Instead of him trying to work on or, or addressing it, he would act as if everything was okay. Then there was a breakdown in our communication where I was always the one trying to communicate, talk, spend time together, date, etc. I was always initiating, wanted to make him feel good about himself and telling him how much I wanted him and it. <laughs> Then I got tired because everything was on me and icicles have been growing in our bedroom ever since and I have no intention of warming it up. It is what it is. Frosty the snowman has frostbites. That's from the Naked Wife. That was page 206, I think. Okay, let's get to training bra and... um training bra and uh, training bra this is one of my favorite stories in here it's a, it's a sad story but it's one of my favorites because a lot of women uh, ignore red flags okay when you're dating and engaged you think it's cute right until you get married and then the stuff hit the fan and you're like oh oh my god okay so for my single girls that's dating, don't, don't, don't ignore the red flags, okay? Uh, all I wanted for Christmas was a training bra for my baby girl and some blinds. My husband was so cheap that cheapness should be declared a disease. He was so cheap that he would only put $5 of gas in the car, enough for me to go to the supermarket and come home. I had to walk 12 blocks to drop the kids off and pick them up from school because he didn't want to waste any money. Be it rain, snow, or sun, we had to walk. He didn't allow me to work. Uh, which made no sense. Why not allow me to work to bring in some extra money? Trying to be a submissive Christian wife, 
I respected his decision. He was so cheap that we only had one TV and one cable box because he said it was a waste of money. I had to let the kids watch TV after school until he got home because once he was home, he didn't share the TV with us. That is when the kids did their home. That was when the kids did their homework. I had to wake the kids up at 5 a.m. on the weekends so they could watch their cartoons until he decided to wake up and then he hogged the TV all day. Thank God for my mom and dad. One year, they bought the kids one of those TVs with the VCR and CD player uh, built in, plus about 50 different movies and cartoons. That was the best Christmas gift ever. He was upset and told me not to waste, not to use up all of his electric city. Girl. Okay, my window's cold, my head is cold. <laughs> my window's open, my head is cold. My breaking point came when my little girl turned nine and was asking for a cartoon training bra. My little boy wanted a pair of light up sneakers and I wanted some blinds for my house for Christmas. He wouldn't give us any money because he said it was a waste of money and we didn't need all of that. Six months before, my aunt had died and willed her house and some money to me. She didn't have any children and she had always treated me as her own, even though her brothers and sisters, my aunts and uncles, had tried to fight it. Once everything was cleared with the lawyer, he brought me a check for $20,000. I cried and shouted for joy and then the kids came and I told my daughter she could get her bra and my son his light up sneakers. Meanwhile, he, Mr. Cheap was sitting at the table like he had drunk a bottle of lemon juice. <laughs> Once the lawyer left, he took the check and said that we needed to deposit it and we needed to let it stay in the bank for a while to make sure everything was okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Christmas is in three weeks, I yelled. He told us not to worry, that he would take care of it. The kids and I stayed up all night and talked and planned what we could do and buy. Days before Christmas, I asked for the money and he brushed it off. Later that day, he came home and guess what? He drove up in a brand new truck. Where's the money? I need to buy the kids stuff for Christmas. Oh, that's foolishness, he said. I burst out crying, screaming and yelling. The kids came outside, the neighbors came out, and I was fighting him. Thank God my neighbor grabbed me because I had picked up a shovel to smash the truck. Oh, it was a big thing. My baby couldn't get a bra for $9.99, but he used my $20,000 to buy a new truck. I thank God for my neighbor who suggested that we, sh that we should go to the bank so they can put a stop payment on the truck and get my money back. It was just a big mess. But th that's the day. Was That day was my breaking point and I knew I had to get away from that bastard. I called my parents and they came and got us. We left everything except what my parents had bought us and the kids and I moved in into the house my aunt left us. That man was selfish and I was more upset at myself that I had just sat there for years and allowed him to treat the kids and me like that. I also blamed the church because 
They said for wives to submit to our husbands and he has the final say in what he says goes. Something is seriously wrong with that thinking. The Naked Wife, available on Amazon. I think I'm going to try to do it for $15. Uh, it's this is on page 198 of the Naked Wife. Okay. Now, I'm going to read Mr. Shepherd. Mr. Shepherd is. Um, I'm actually going to write a book about this. Okay. M my Psalm 23 husband. From uh, 20 Tasks of Guys, you might meet. Page six. While this is only a sample of the Psalm 23 husband, aka Mr. Shepherd. As you read 23 Tasks of Guys You Might Meet on social media, on dating, aka gather data, please keep the Psalm 23 husband all the way in the front of your beautiful mind, thoughts, dreams, hopes, and desires. To read more about the Psalm 23 husband, check back with me periodically. It's coming soon. In the meantime, if you have been in the church at any length of time, I am 99% sure you have memorized, read, or heard of Psalm 23. I believe it is the most popular and known psalm there is. What is a psalm? A psalm is a song. There is a book of psalms in the Bible comprised of 150 psalms or songs. Additionally, there are several other psalms throughout the Bible. So what is the psalm again? Let's look at Psalm 23 from the King James Version. If you are not familiar, the bold is the psalm itself and the regular type is my translation. Again, please remember that this is only a sample of what I have written. A more extension, extensive version is coming soon. Psalm 1, Psalm 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Your husband is a choice, so choose wisely because he is to be your Lord, which means covering, your leader, provider, protector, and professor of love. Therefore, you shall not lack any good thing. Your husband is to be like the shepherd who gently loves, directs, and leads his sheep. As a shepherd, loves his sheep, provides for their every need, and protects them, so will your husband. Verse 2, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Your husband is to provide a comfortable home for you and your children. <clears throat> your husband is to lead a life of peace, thus he will lead you to a life of peace also. In this way, your husband will set the tone and the atmosphere of your home. Verse 3, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Choosing the right husband is vital because he will restore your soul, which consists of your will, your intellect, and your emotions. This is a part of my mentorship group. If you want to sign up for it, we're going to talk about soul ties and lies, okay? Our soul, God is a tripart being. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Man is also a tripart being. Man is a spirit, uh, possesses a soul, lives in a body. Our soul is tripart. Soul is consisted of our will, 
intellect and our emotions okay so soul ties and lies my mentorship group okay so so your soul is will into emotions your husband will lead you in the ways of the Lord righteousness and right standing because God has anointed and blessed him with you as a gift he must answer to the Lord about you verse 4 yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me yes you'll walk through some tough times life will happen but you ain't got nothing to worry about because your husband gotcha your husband is with you and his name his name don't choose a husband don't have a good name girl his name his strong arms and his bank account will comfort you okay <laughs> thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over some guys often ask what we bring to the ta to the table as women well they are wrong 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 your husband is to provide a table before you your husband is to provide for all of your needs and his favor runs from the, your sparkling crown all the way down to your pretty little toes your husband is to provide all so well for you that you will be running over with blessing surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever you see ladies your husband is to be a good man your husband is like goodness and mercy therefore he will cover you like a mama bear covers her cups your husband's love will overshadow you for the rest of your days and he will have you living in the house he bought you and not his mama's basement or a shelter your husband won't shack up with you because he values you and will marry you okay princesses i just wanted to share this little snack with you before we jump into 23 types of guys you might meet the 23 psalm ak mr shepherd in mind keep in mind as you read i have a whole lot more on the 23 psalm 23 husband aka mr shepherd in another book coming soon okay let me just read this the back of the husband do you know what a do you know that the title husband is a calling so a husband is a title like christ is a title <laughs> you know jesus christ is not his name it's his title okay mm, bible studies you back on sunday school girl okay christ means the anointed and the anointed one and his anointed christ is a title and you know that do you know that the title husband is a calling yes husbands are called anointed and appointed and destined by god to profess their love provide for and protect their wives a husband is to love his wife like christ loves the church how did christ loves the church christ loves the church so much that he died for her so what happens when a husband does not fulfill his god ordained destiny of a husband to his wife it causes his wife to be naked the naked wife is a revolutionary book where Christian author, me, and blogger Janice Hilton Thompson interviewed over 200 wives and ex-wives to provide a platform where they told their story. The Naked Wife is an eye-opener, a stay-up-all-night read and inspiring Christian book. It gives you insight into the marital situations and experiences that many wives across the globe go through and the ruthless and inconceivable circumstances that many women have found themselves to be subjected to 
What if it doesn't have to be that way? What if there is a way out? The Naked Wife, available on Amazon. And I am on sale. I'm going to put them for $15 each. I love you. I love you. I love you. If you've read any of these books, which of them is your favorite one? I'm going to come on tomorrow. I have a huge surprise for you tomorrow. Oh my God, it's Christmas. I have Christmas surprises for you tomorrow. I love you. I was supposed to come on. I'm not. I just got home and I need to go tend to my, my churns, okay? I have to tend to my churns. This is my little five-year-old. He just want to stay on me all the time. I love you, girl. I got to go. Run on over to Amazon and $15.99 each, okay? And the in Christ I am. I don't know if I can do anything with that, okay? I love you. Oh, remember my other channel. Study the Bible in one year. Oh, okay. Go, go.